In today's video, I'm sharing with you some tips that I wish I knew when I started, and I have some special guests that are sharing some tips that they wish they knew as well. You're going to walk away feeling more comfortable inside of After Effects. All right, without further ado, let's jump on in. <laughs> This video is sponsored by Envato Elements. Using my link below, you can get 70% off your first month to access unlimited video assets. So the first tip that I wish I knew when I first started out was how to export an animation, a logo reveal, or transition with a transparency layer. So here inside of After Effects, I have this walking gradient transition that I got from Envato Elements. And you can see that I have the transparency grid turned on. If this is off, it's still transparent and black, but this just reassures you that it is indeed transparent. But how do you export this with the transparency? So when you put it over top of your footage, it, it will work. work. You can press Command M on a Mac or Control M on a PC to bring up the render queue. And from here, you need to go to Output Module and select High Quality. And from here, if you select Channels, notice that RGB plus Alpha is grayed out. Well, to fix that, we can go to Format Options and choose a different video codec. Let's choose Animation and now press OK. And now from the channels dropdown, we're going to see RGB plus alpha. So that includes the transparency. Alpha is just a fancy word for the transparency layer. And then press OK. And then you can output it and make sure to save it in your project as well. Hit save. And then you can click on render and done. It's exported. Another option is, let's say we go back to our composition, press Command M or Control M. What you can do is select Q in Adobe Media Encoder, A-M-E. And this will open up Adobe Media Encoder. And let's wait for it to open because it closed on me and I didn't mean to do that. And now we need to choose a different format. We need to choose QuickTime. And then you can choose Apple ProRes with Alpha. And this will also export with an alpha channel. So if you prefer to use Adobe Media Encoder, which is probably what you're more familiar with with Premiere Pro, this is another way that you can do it. And then just press the green icon and it will export. And now we have our export with the transparency layer. All right, here is an awesome time-saving tip from master motion designer himself, Ben Marriott from Sydney, Australia. So I've got a whole bunch of effects that I'm applying to this square got a gradient ramp and a whole bunch of glows. We could just select these, copy them and paste them onto our circle. But we can do something else as well. If we go up to edit, we have the option to copy with property links. Then if we select our circle and paste them just with control V, it pastes all of those effects, but they are also linked to that original layer. So now we can go in and make any adjustments to any of these effects. This one layer now controls all of those effects and for all of those properties as well that we can even animate. And here is Ross from Flatpak Effects, and he has some really cool tips that will help you create smoother animations using the graph editor. On this timeline here, I've got this animation of this 3D camera flying through my scene. Now at the moment, all the keyframes are linear, and what most people do is then they just right click and go to Easy Ease, and that's fine, it smooths out that animation. But in the middle here, you can see the camera stops and then starts again. And this is because you're smoothing out the velocity or the movement of that camera. So what I like to do is take all of these keyframes, right click, go to keyframe interpolation and make these continuous bezier. Then I can click this button here, which takes me into the graph editor. Now you wanna make sure you're working in the speed editor, but if I drag up and smooth out these movements here, or these keyframes in my graph, essentially we create a much smoother animation for that camera. Now, if I turn on motion blur for all my layers and that camera, we end up with a much smoother overall animation. Now this works not only just from camera movement, you can apply this to any animation that you do inside of After Effects. And this is the difference between those beginner animations and then getting into what the pros do to really make all their work look really smooth and slick. And here's Haley, the creator of Motion Hatch. And Haley has a great tip on how to work with shy layers inside of After Effects. So what I wanted to talk about today is this shy layers function in After Effects. If you have any of these little people hidden in your timeline, when we go and click here, you can see that that will hide all the layers for you. It's really, really good 
to know how to use this and to remember about this because sometimes if someone gives a project to you, then you can get really confused about where to find these layers and where to manipulate them in the timeline. So I would always check if this here is blue, then I would definitely recommend toggling it on and off to see which layers are hidden and which are not. And now we have the one and only Will Carmack that is super inspiring. His tip takes the wiggle effect to the camera layer. Let's go check it out. The tip I'll be giving you today is how to make a 3D camera in After Effects look like it has a handheld look. This camera movement is kind of nice. We can make this look way more dynamic and cool if the camera is actually moving. So let's click on the camera layer, drop down and point of interest is what we want to look at. The third number in point of interest, let's crank that the frick up. You can see that the anchor point is just going really far into the scene. Now let's alt click on point of interest. We'll type in wiggle parentheses one comma 100. I'll play them side by side for you so you can see like the little bit of difference. And next up is the talented Jake in motion. He's going to show you how to find any property instantly with the search bar. The timeline search bar allows you to find any property instantly inside of any composition of After Effects. And I'll show you how it works. Let's say that I wanted to change the colors of one of these circles. What I would normally do is select that layer, have to twirl open the contents until I can find that specific property that I'm trying to modify. But instead, I'm going to use the timeline search bar and instead type in the word color. So now I can quickly access every color property in this composition, but it works for absolutely any property. So if I wanted to change, say, the size of these four circles, I would just select these and then change my keyword to be size instead and that's going to bring up the size property for just those selected layers. Now what I can do is make a selection of all of those size properties, just drag my selection around all of them and change the size of all of them at once. And then I can play back my updated animation with the modified properties. This also works for things like expressions. I could also use multiple keywords. So I'll type in start, comma, that separates the next keyword and I'll say end and then I'll do one more comma and say offset. That brings up the three keywords I need to modify the trim paths for any layers in my composition. And next it's Anna Maria Quintero, also known as animation.art on Instagram and she is an amazing VFX compositor. All right, Anna, hit us with your tip. Hello. So when you have a layer that already has some attributes, it can be some keyframes, an effect, a mask, and you want to replicate that in another element instead of just just like copying and pasting absolutely everything. You can just duplicate that layer and while it is selected, find the new element that you want and click and while you press Alt, drag it on top of that element and it's just gonna replace whatever you had before and keep all the attributes. If this video is helping you out so far, do me a favor and be sure to give it a thumbs up as well as subscribe. When I was first starting out as a video editor, I used loads of After Effects templates to help elevate my edits because I had to do the motion design as well as the editing. So the templates helped me get the project done faster. And it also helped me learn After Effects because what I would do is reverse engineer the template. So I'd open it up, toggle different properties open to learn how these effects were made. And using my link below, you can see that you can get a special 70% off in Vato Elements to get thousands of different After Effects templates that you can use within your video edits or to create some cool commercials. If you're editing highlights from podcasts, you can use some of their podcast visualizers that also will adapt the waveform to what people are saying. All you have to do is drag and drop in your own photos. You can update the font and color and it's a really fast and visually interesting way to promote your podcast. If you need to create a map route animation, there's this really cool map route After Effects template by Typoland. And you can see here, you can create different routes on a landscape and you can choose different landscapes as well. So this could be great for a documentary, for example. Also talking about maps, there's also some really cool earth zoom templates. So this effect where you hover over a country or a city and it zooms in, to a closer in spot. It's a very, very cool effect and it can zoom back out. You can use this template to achieve the effect super fast. Or if you need a dramatic historical opener for a documentary, it's amazing that this template you can get for just $16.50 per month. I mean, it's ridiculous. You can download as much as you want and use it in any number of projects. And the templates just help you get it done faster. So here's a tip that I wish I knew when editing templates inside of After Effects. So here I have this podcast opener 
from Envato Elements, but what if I want to quickly edit these colors? Well, most templates come with what is called a control composition. And inside of that, there is a layer called control, or sometimes it's called color or color control. And if you go to the effect controls panel, you can see here, I can quickly access and change the colors. I actually like to use my libraries panel because I have my color themes saved here. So I can just quickly use the dropper tool to select a color and now it's updated to my color. So it's a very, very useful tip to know about using the color controls and the libraries panel using your saved color themes. I'm super grateful to Envato Elements for sponsoring today's video. Definitely try it out. It's been super useful to me and my editing team because we can find assets from Elements and use them in our tutorials. If you'd like to try it out, you can use my link below to get 70% off your first month. All right, let's get back into the tips. And here's Evan, also known as ECA Abrams on YouTube. And you've probably seen him do some streaming with Adobe, but he also has a ton of tutorials on YouTube. YouTube that can help you become a better motion designer. All right, Evan, share with us your tip. If you have a look at this fairly complex example, it is powered by a good mess of keyframes here. I'll expand up so you can see them. Ooh boy, that's a lot. Now, if we wanted to retime this, slow it down, speed it up, slow down some parts, speed up other parts, you'd think it might be a lot of work, but really all you have to do is put a box marquee selection around all of the things you want to modify. Make sure you get all of the keyframes you want in there, select them all, and then hold down option and grab either the first or last keyframe in time. So the furthest to the beginning, furthest to the end, grab on that and pull out. And you can see that we can stretch, we can stretch all of these along. So now we are slowing it down. We're slowing down that section. We can select another grouping of them. Maybe these ones are going to tighten up that section, pinch that together, pinch in those. Let's see how we like that. We're able to be a lot more gestural, a little bit more relaxed with how we are moving things around. The ratio of things in between those keys, the first and last, all those things being maintained. So you get to maintain the intricate timing of things, but just slowing and stretching them, being a little more gestural as you brush them around. Be loose with it. Have fun. Next up is Leia Saban, also known as Leia Motion on Instagram. And she's known for creating these really amazing clone cycles. And she's worked with a ton of celebrities. All right, Leia, hit us with your cloning tip. Difference math allow you to compare two videos and to compare the pixel that change in the video. So if you want to do clone version of this one, what you will do, uh, maybe a mask, maybe rotoscope him. It will take some time, but let's say you just duplicate this clip. Okay. You use different smart. Okay. Put it on that clip. I want to compare that clip to the blank. I will do that on two clips just to create two clone. And if I move this one now, I have the cloning effect all done. You can do that over and over again. I think you get the main idea. So that's my, the feature I really love using on a lot of my project that uh, include cloning. Next up is Kyler Holland. He's a fellow YouTuber and creator, and he created a podcast called Inside the Mind of a YouTuber. And his tip will help you get comfortable with expressions. When I was starting After Effects, I wish I knew how powerful expressions can be. We have a simple text layer right here. And if you bring down the effects, you can go over position and hold option or alt and click into there. And this brings up the expression window where we can start to type anything. So let's just type in wiggle and then type in our frequency comma amplitude. So what is our frequency? Well, let's say that's 10 times per second and then comma our amplitude, let's say 200. 10 times every second, it's gonna go wiggle all over the place and it's at an amplitude of 200, but we can slow this down to one, and then 50. So the amplitude's smaller and it's going a little bit slower. So the wiggle expression is so powerful, but these are all just expressions. These expressions allow us to reference the source rectangle of our text layer by utilizing information such as the top, the left, the width, the height, and we can write simple expressions to let After Effects know how and when to resize it. Well, hopefully that got you guys excited to learn more about expressions because honestly, I use them every day. And here is Justin Odisho. He's going to help you center align text as well as the anchor points inside of After Effects. It's super useful. So if we have our type tool and we're working on a new text layer, a lot of times you might want to quickly center your text and you can do that on the right hand side in the align panel. 
you can just align horizontally and vertically. However, you also have other things such as the anchor point. If I drop down the text menu, go to the transform section and do anything like rotate, you'll notice the text rotates around that anchor point. If you want to center the anchor point as well, you can find that option under layer, transform, center anchor point in layer content. So when I click that, you'll see the anchor point get centered. And now if I were to rotate, you'll see we rotate around that center anchor point, which can be useful. Alternatively, you can also press Y on the keyboard or click here to grab the anchor point tool and make the anchor point wherever you want it to be. Another handy tip is if you click the snapping tool, you can snap it along the edges. So if you wanna get it right in that corner, you can snap the anchor point on any corner of the shape with this tool. Again, allowing you to kind of rotate around the things you want or scale around the anchor point that you want. Up next is Tyler White, a fellow tutorialist on YouTube, and he has a quick way to remove effects in After Effects. If you're working with multiple layers or effects, one thing that can be extremely helpful is being able to quickly remove those unwanted effects from multiple different layers at once. So in order to do that, I'm just gonna go down here and highlight all of the layers in my composition. Then I'm gonna press E on the keyboard and that's gonna bring up all the effects that were applied to those different layers. And then I'm just gonna hold down Command or Control on the keyboard and I'm gonna select those layers that have effects that I want to remove. And then I'm gonna go up here to Effect and select Remove All and that's going to remove those effects from those layers. So I really hope that these tips were useful. I know a few of them I didn't even know myself. So do me a favor, go in my description box right now and go subscribe to all of my friends that contributed here. They all have tons of motion design tips that will help you become a better motion designer and VFX compositor as well. They post on Instagram as well as YouTube. If you wanna learn some more After Effects tips from myself, you can click right over here to watch After Effects videos that I created and I released my own toolkit plugin for Premiere Pro that has over 920 effects that you can drag and drop into your timeline. To check that out, you can just click right over here. That's all for today's video. And as always, keep creating better video with Gal. See you next time. Bye. Ooh.